Italy's LGBT community has very real fears after a conservative bloc dominated by the far right won the country's general election. That's according to leading gay rights campaigner and political candidate for the gay party, Fabrizio Morazzo. He's worried about a possible erosion of civil rights under the new administration. We have big concerns for new generations because they are creating an ideological battle due also to the deep economic crisis because of energy and other reasons. So hate was used as a tool against a given community in many other instances in the past, which we hope won't happen again. The Nationalist Brothers of Italy group, led by Giorgio Maloney, emerged as the largest party in the September 25th ballot. She will lead the most right-wing government in Rome since World War II. As part of a conservative coalition, Maloney is allied with the League, another far-right force led by Matteo Salvini, as well as the mainstream conservative Forza Italia of former Premier Silvio Berlusconi. Marazzo fears that the bloc's conservative views may lead to discrimination for the LGBT community. If there's no action in conjunction with schools, social services, help centers risk failing to create synergy. Because you can offer support to young people, but if in the school or the place of work where the act of discrimination happens, there's no law to intervene. We can only give moral or psychological support to the people affected. Therefore, there can't be a social change. This means not only to go backwards, but also that the situation would get worse, and we are very scared about that. There is already some evidence behind Morazzo's concerns. Conservative Catholic lobby Provita e Familia has called on the new government to pick an education minister opposed to any gender and LGBT ideological colonization in schools. 45-year-old Maloney herself presents as a defender of Christian values and an enemy of what she calls gender ideology and the LGBT lobby. Explaining her position to gay parenting rights, she said that unlucky children who are up for adoption deserve the best, meaning a father and a mother. She has, however, denied suggestions that her outlook would stretch to abolishing existing legislation on abortion rights or same-sex partnerships. Maloney is not expected to take office before late October, so it's too early to say what her premiership will look like. But her party's culture spokesman remarked just last week that gay couples are not legal, later claiming he was referring only to gay couples who adopt. In terms of public opinion, an Ipsos poll in June showed that 63% of Italians backed marriage rights for gay people and 59% were in favour of gay adoptions, numbers that have increased in recent years. Florida residents on Tuesday raced to gather supplies and fortify homes and businesses as Hurricane Ian crept toward the U.S. Many boarded up windows and filled sandbags in hopes of staving off expected floodwaters. If they say mandatory evacuation, it's time to go. That message echoed from officials at every level as the Category 3 hurricane tracked northward toward Florida. The National Hurricane Center warned that time is running out as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis urged residents to follow evacuation orders. Safety is paramount. When you're talking about storm surge like this, when you're talking about historic flooding, uh, that water is a very, very difficult adversary. FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell said the agency is most concerned about storm surge and the slow pace of the storm, forecast to creep across the state at five miles per hour as it makes landfall. And this is significant because what this means is that Floridians are going to experience the impacts from this storm for a very long time. Take it seriously. Do not underestimate the potential that this storm can bring. Chriswell said the federal government already has in place 128,000 gallons of fuel, hundreds of Army Corps of Engineer personnel, nearly 4 million meals and over 3 million gallons of water, along with Red Cross shelters, ambulances and medical teams. The planning intensified after Hurricane Ian slammed into western Cuba on Tuesday, 
forcing evacuations, cutting power to nearly one million people and tearing roofs off homes. Whatever they need, I mean this sincerely, whatever they need, contact me directly. President Joe Biden said he called mayors in three Florida cities to assure them they have federal support in the form of food, shelter and help after the storm passes. Wall Street sank deeper into a bear market on Tuesday, with the S&P 500 recording its lowest close in almost two years. As Federal Reserve policymakers continue to talk up more interest rate hikes, even at the risk of throwing the economy into a downturn. The Dow fell 0.4 percent, while the S&P lost 0.2 percent, falling below June's prior low for the year. The Nasdaq climbed a quarter of a percent. Chris Constantinos is director of investments and chief investment strategist at Riverfront Investment Group. The way the S&P 500 closed below that June low, um, we view that from a tactical, from a short term perspective as, as a negative sign. Um, it sort of invalidates, if you will, um, the, the, the longevity, the staying power of that June rally and suggests to us that, um, you know, that was nothing more than a bear market rally. Uh, and that we're likely to continue to, to plumb uh, new lower lows in the future. The S&P 500 has declined for six straight sessions, its longest losing streak since February of 2020. Echoing the hawkish words of Fed Chair Jerome Powell, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard on Tuesday made a case for more rate hikes, while Chicago Fed President Charles Evans said the central bank will need to raise rates by at least another percentage point this year. The opinion that matters the most is Powell's, um, but the fact that you have other that the Fed is basically jawboning and sending out other governors with a very similar message to Powell is probably that's probably strategic on the Fed's part, and that's just trying to underline or reiterate to the market not to you know not to expect this hawkishness to to lift anytime soon. In individual movers. Tesla gained 2.5% and NVIDIA added 1.5%, both companies helping to keep the NASDAQ in positive territory. As we meet, so-called referenda were just conducted by de facto authorities in the Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia regions. Ukrainians were asked whether they approved their regions joining the Russian Federation. Voting took place in polling centers. De facto authorities, accompanied by soldiers, also went door to door with ballot boxes. These exercises, which began on 23 September, have been held during active armed conflict in areas under Russian control and outside Ukraine's legal and constitutional framework. They cannot be called a genuine expression of the popular will. Russia's sham referenda, if accepted, will open a Pandora's box that we cannot close. We ask you to join us in reaffirming our commitment to the UN Charter and meeting this challenge head on. If Russia chooses to shield itself from accountability here in the Council, we will then look to the UN General Assembly to send an unmistakable message to Moscow. The world must stand together and defend the Charter of the United Nations. Russia's recognition of these sham referendums as normal, the implementation of the so-called Crimean scenario and another attempt to annex Ukrainian territory will mean that there is nothing to talk about with this pre president of Russia. Annexation is the kind of move that puts him alone against the whole of humanity. Ukraine will not be swayed by any nuclear threats from Moscow or annexation votes held on its territory, Ukrainian presidential advisor Mikhail Polyak told Reuters on Tuesday. We believe the war can only end when we have liberated our territory in the internationally recognized borders of 1991. That's it. We have no other scenarios. There, Russia is conducting some referendums where 20,000 people under pressure in the region of 1.6 million residents, took a decision to so-called be a part of Russia. And we're supposed to accept this model or else a nuclear weapon will be used so that we will give away Zaporizhia region together with the city of Zaporizhia? This is nonsense and it is unacceptable for us.
Podoyak spoke as Russia concluded voting in four partially occupied Ukrainian regions that Moscow says paves the way for their formal annexation. In tandem, a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin hinted that Moscow could be ready to use tactical nuclear weapons to defend newly annexed territory. Podoyak called on the world's nuclear powers to warn Russia against doing so. We don't have technologies to intercept this type of strategic ballistic rockets. That's why it would be good if not only Ukraine thinks about how to prevent the possible attack by the Russian Federation, but also other countries. Even if we're scared, do we really have an alternative to continuing the further liberation of our territory?